Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. So in today's video I'm going to be starting a new um, tutorial series on intermediate programming with Python. Um, so that being said, a prerequisite for these videos is going to be that you know a little bit about Python, you know the basics, you know if statements, for loops, lists, so on, um, as I'm not going to be reteaching and touching on a lot of those aspects um, which I'm going to consider trivial now. Um, I'm going to be teaching some more advanced topics so if you guys are interested in that make sure you watch until the end of the series and you go through all the videos as a lot of the stuff i'm going to do is going to add on um as we keep going on videos so something i show in the previous video i'm going to add on to it in the next one um and these videos are going to be a really good way to enhance your programming knowledge and to learn a lot more about python that being said, a lot of the stuff I'm going to show here is specific to Python um, and probably will not work in other programming languages. That being said, let's get ahead and go ahead and get started with our first video and this one is going to be optional parameters. Now this is probably one of the simplest topics that I'm going to cover in this series but I figured it would be a good starting point. So let's just um, go, up, go ahead and go over what a parameter is. Um, so you should already know this but just to catch some of you guys up, I have a function here, I've defined, I call it func. It returns x to the power of 2 um, and our parameter in this case would be x anything in this bracket is a parameter note you can have multiple parameters so I can have x y z and so on now what we want to do is we want to create something called an optional parameter now again sorry the argument here um, so when we, I call my function I said call equals func 5 our argument 5 is passed into the parameter x x is used here and then if I run my program so I'm running it here uh, oops, just have to drag my console over. It's on a different window right now. Oh, and I've accidentally opened up something else now. Having a uh, one second, guys. Sorry about that. Okay, I have my console, which is here. Uh, it prints 25 to the screen, uh, like expected. Okay, so now we want to create something called an optional parameter. So the, the whole point of an optional parameter is so that we don't always have to keep typing in parameters, um, especially if we have. Uh, more than one that we have to type in it can get tedious so the way that we can do this and it's actually really simple and it's extremely useful and I'll show you in a different example later is simply beside your parameter so in this case X just put an equal sign and then put what you want its default value to be so in this case I'm just gonna put uh, one okay so now what happens is if I call my function and I don't give it a value for X it's simply gonna use one so we can show that so again, run the program and I get one because one to the power of two, well, is one. And I didn't put anything in here and I didn't get an error. Now note if, if I get rid of this equals one and I try to call, we get an error because it's missing a uh, potential argument X, right? So let's put that back, X equals one. Now what happens if I do put something in the brackets here of my function call? So for example, I put something like five. When I run the program now, we get 25. So if you ever put anything in uh, your function instead of the uh, like default parameter, instead of just leaving it blank in this case, then it's going to overwrite this default parameter and it's going to make x equal to 5 instead of 1. Now you might say, well, why is this useful? I'm going to show you an example in just a second, but I want to show how you can use multiple optional parameters um, and how you can mix them with non-optional parameters. So let's just rewrite this function. Um, and in this case, I'm going to take two parameters. I'm just going to say like word and currents or let's say frequency like this okay and now all I'm gonna do in this function is I'm simply gonna print to the screen word multiplied by frequency like that okay and then here in my function call my word I'm gonna say is Tim and frequency 5 now this should just print to the screen if I do this and it does we get Tim 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 now what if I wanted to make the frequency um, an optional parameter? So all we have to do here is I'm going to change my frequency to be a default of 1. So that means now I have a parameter that's not optional, which is word, and a parameter that is optional, frequency. So when I run the program by just putting in my needed parameter, I get Tim and just one time because that's the default value of frequency. Again, we don't get an error um, like you might expect. And then, same thing, if I want to change the frequency, so maybe I want to make the frequency 10, all I do is I type in a number for frequency, so corresponding, and then when I run the program, I get Tim, and then 10 times like that. Now, what happens if I do something like this, and I put 10 here um, instead of frequency? Well, you'll see what happens. 
we get 10 because 10 now is word and frequency is one and 10 times one, well, is equal to 10. Okay, so now let's go to multiple optional parameters. Um, so now I'm gonna say add and frequency and I want add to also be an optional parameter. So in this case, I'm gonna say add is equal to five, frequency is equal to one, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna say word is times frequency plus add like that um, and now in this case same thing I'll just do a word in this case I'll say like, hello um, so our default value for add is five our default frequency for uh, our default value for frequency is one so we should have five plus one um, which is six multiplied by word so we should get hello six times and we do and now again I can put in a value um, for add so in this case I'm gonna say add is equal to zero frequency is still gonna be one. So now I get just one time to the screen, hello. So the way it works is when you have optional parameters is say I wanted to type in a value for frequency, but I wanted to leave add as the default value. I'm not actually able to do that because of the order in which I've set these parameters. So if I wanted add to still be five, but I wanted to change frequency, I would have to put five for add, and then I could put a value for frequency like three or something like that, okay? Um, and again, if we show this, add is going to stay at five, frequency is going to be three. So we should get hello eight times, in which we do. Um, now, if I wanted to change that around um, and I wanted to say, okay, well, I want add to always be defaulted to a value like five, and I'm hardly going to change that, but frequency is going to be something I change a lot when I use my function, then we would just flip these around. So we'd say frequency equals one, add equals five, like that. So now this is going to uh, go to frequency and this is going to go to add um, Like so I hope that makes sense. So now I'm just going to go down and I'm going to show um, Some better examples to why this is kind of more useful. So I've just created this class here um, Called car All right, and I have you can see a bunch of parameters So I have five up here um, not including self and then just one here in its method called display now these optional parameters can be used inside of methods as methods really are just functions that apply to a class, right? So I'll show you right now how this class kind of works. Um, I've just created a new object called whip. It's a new car object and we have Ford Fusion 2012 new. Um, and these are the parameters that it takes, right? So it takes the make, the model, year, condition, and kilometers. All of these are required. I need to type these in no matter what. The next one that I have, my method is display. Um, and what this is going to do is simply just print out to the screen um, one of two messages. If show all is equal to true, it's going to print out everything including the condition and the kilometers of the car. If not, it's just going to print out the make, model, and year of the car. So let's watch this uh, run on the screen. So this car is a Ford Fusion from 2012. It is new and has zero kilometers, um, like so. So you can see that this is working well. Now what if I wanted to say um, I want condition and I want kilometers to both be optional parameters. So typically when you buy a car, most people buy new cars. So I'm gonna say the condition is gonna be defaulted to new and kilometers is gonna be equal to zero because if you're buying a new car, well then kilometers should be equal to zero. So only if um, I want to, I'm gonna change that. So now same thing here, if I go like this and I run the program, we should get the same thing. So this car is a Ford Fusion from 2012. It is new and has zero kilometers. And indeed we do. We didn't need to type in those parameters because again, they were optional. Um, next one I'm gonna show you is down here in display. Same thing, I can set this equal to something like true. So show all equals true. And now when I call my display, um, it automatically shows all unless I specify otherwise by typing in false like so. And then we get this car is a Ford Fusion from 2012. Now this is really useful if you have a lot of different parameters. It is especially useful when you're typing and working with classes. So that's why I wanted to show you this example. I hope that you guys are able to implement this in your programming. Um, anyways, that's been it for this video. Uh, make sure you guys stay tuned for the next one, which should be coming out in just a few days.